There are almost 240,000 Russian citizens living in Germany, and that number is believed to have grown since the invasion of Ukraine. On Sunday, many of them will have a chance to vote in Russia's presidential election. And our team spoke to some of the members of the Russian diaspora here in Berlin to learn their hopes and fears for the future. The Russian embassy in Germany, notionally, this gilded fortress is where Berlin's Russians would come to cast their votes in Sunday's elections. These days, they mostly come to mourn. Alexei Navalny, Vladimir Putin's fiercest critic, was found dead in a penal colony last month. Another brutal nail in the coffin of democracy. Try as they might, some are still hoping to keep the flame alive. Around the back of the embassy, Putin's opponents are channeling their anger. Freedom for political prisoners, they shout. The campaign to rename this street Alexei Navalny Strasse has gained almost 50,000 signatures. I was a Navalny supporter, and I think that the fight is not over. And this today is a part of the fight against Putin's propaganda. A space for artists nearby. Dozens of Russians packed into a cosy theatre in search of inspiration, hope or therapy. On stage, a discussion about the upcoming vote, about war and about what to do next. I don't expect any good from this election. Are you going to vote? No. Why not? I don't know what Navalny would say. He would probably call to do something. But I don't know if I should go to the Russian embassy. And I will vote. Who will you vote for? I guess I will destroy the ballot. Probably I will just vote for more than one candidate. And maybe I will write, our president is Navalny. I think most of the people who came to uh, Germany, to Europe, do not have much expectations from these elections because it's very clear what the outcome is going to be. Amid that feeling of helplessness, a sense of guilt prevails over Vladimir Putin's war on Ukraine. No matter where you live, in the West or in Russia, you feel responsibility for this. Back at the demonstration, nerves are on edge. Everyone here knows all too well how Putin has deployed the vast state apparatus to keep control and crush dissent. Just a minute ago, actually, a consulate uh, person has spoken to me, just said hi, uh, meaning that he's been observing us, he's been present at this action uh, and uh, has been registering everything that is happening here. It's really bad. I'm afraid to go back to Russia, my homeland. Who could think that? Perhaps this man, a political exile who tells me he was imprisoned in Russia for fighting corruption. We have only one uh, choice for stop Putinism, is army, is Ukraine army. And uh, when uh, Ukraine win uh, in Ukraine territory, uh, Putin is uh, Russian, um, Russian people. Don't believe Putin, what is Putinism is, is good. With the battlefield out of the question and electoral change a diminishing prospect, all that is left for those here are small acts of courage and expressions of defiance in hope for a better future. All right, let's bring in Alexei Yusupov from the Friedrich Ebert Foundation. It's the oldest political think tank here in Germany. And he's joining us from Berlin. Welcome to you. I wonder what does it mean for Russia and the Russian exiled population that this is almost a foregone conclusion that Putin will win another term? Well, you see, it's not a vote which is about actually selecting a better candidate. There is no competition around. This is clear to everyone. But there are several other functions of this event. So the Russian regime cannot not hold the elections because it still needs to generate some kind of a semi-genuine legitimacy for Vladimir Putin. 
However, if you compare the, even the ballot itself to all of the other elections where Vladimir Putin has run, it's the shortest one. It has the least possible number of different ideas on it. And obviously, it will be all about how many people will turn out to actually destroy the ballot, as someone has said in your reporting, or maybe write a different name onto it, or maybe just vote for a candidate who is at least superficially um, anti-war. These are the three options we will see. And I guess it's all about making this plebiscitarian vote for Putin's fifth term not too easy and not too pleasant for the Kremlin. Yeah, you're talking about the protest vote there. There is an entire generation who only know Russia under Putin, 25 years. Uh, is there any reason for them or, or hope the political situation there could change any time soon or in any significant way? Well, it is a desperate time and many people feel that, you know, is this the darkest hour already or is there a more to suffer and to endure before there is actually a shift towards a better political future? Analytically speaking, there is no reason to believe that change is happening anytime soon. So it's all about preserving your energy and the belief that there is a different political setup where Russia can live and can be governed. And this is also the heritage of Alexei Navalny, the optimism of the deed. Sure, you will not vote Putin out of power. It doesn't mean you need to give up on your country and on the elections and on your institutions altogether. Uh, historically, uh, Alexei, Putin often waits until after elections to push through unpopular moves. He's not alone there on this planet. Uh, do you think another conscription slash mobilisation effort for the Ukraine war uh, could be waiting for Russians post this election? I think there is a list of measures which has been withheld to be implemented after the election. I don't necessarily believe conscription or a new mobilisation will be the actual thing to do because it's highly unpopular and risky. But we know already that Russia will reform its taxation system for the first time going significantly into a progressive taxation. So you can see the economic effect of the sanctions and the war is there. The state needs more money and it needs to undertake unpopular steps. I also believe that there will be more censorship and maybe even more internet blockages after the election, after the legitimacy is performed. Uh, but I don't really believe that mobilization is the next step to go. It's much too complicated to mobilize a society which is in generally, in general terms, uh, very atomized and passive. Right. It doesn't really want to be participating. Well, joining me here in the studio now is my colleague Roman Goncharenko. He's a DW political editor. He's an expert on Eastern Europe. Roman, it's good to see you. We just saw right there, there there's quite a large Russian diaspora here in Germany. But when we talk about them, we can't talk about them as being a monolith of Russian opposition, can we? Of course not. So we see a lot of Russian opposition here because many came mm -hmm. after the uh, full-scale invasion of Ukraine, after 22, uh, but not so many. So um, we are talking about maybe tens of thousands, um, not hundreds of thousands like Ukrainian refugees here in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were already hundreds of thousands of people living in Germany who speak Russian. Not all of them have Russian passports, mm -hmm. but uh, we can assume that there are Putin supporters among them. Mm -hmm. they are, they've shown um, Russian flags in support for this war. There were rallies in cities like Berlin or Cologne, uh, but we don't know if those were only Russian citizens. Some of them uh, were German citizens as well. So it, it's a complicated picture, but um, I think um, what's interesting to, to watch will be on Sunday, the Russian opposition has called its citizens to show up at midday mm -hmm. uh, and to show solidarity. It's called Midday Against Putin. Mm -hmm. And some opposition leaders uh, think that it's a good idea to show up and just to see how many uh, people are against this war and against Putin. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess it will be easier for people here in Germany sure. to show up. Um, this is probably the only legal way uh, where you can show that you're against Putin and against this election, against the war in Russia, just turning up at an um, election. Um, the the uh, optics are not good for Vladimir Putin, that's for sure, but the, the number of votes outside of Russia, they really can't make a difference in the outcome of the election, can they? Even if the election were a fair and free election. Well, not really. So uh, there is absolutely no ground to believe that the election um, outside of Russia will be fairer 
mm -hmm. than inside Russia. So yeah. in Germany last time, there were just about um, 30,000, I think, people uh, who voted here in Germany. Um, this time it could be higher, but we do not know. The mm -hmm. Russian opposition is still divided on the issue mm -hmm. if you should vote or not. Some say, don't go there, don't do this, just show up, show solidarity and go away. Others say, come and vote. Uh, maybe you can vote for anyone but Putin. Uh, just like the um, video of Alexei Navalny, the opposition leader, who was presumably killed, or at least uh, we don't know exactly at the moment, but this is what some people think, uh, that he was killed uh, a few weeks before the election day. Okay. And this is what makes this election, election special. This is the first presidential election without Alexei Navalny. Yeah, and it is also the first presidential election with a war in Ukraine that you're not allowed to call a war in Russia. Absolutely. Roman Gunchereno, Roman, we appreciate your reporting and your analysis. Thank you. Thank you.